uh, 2008 uh, Nissan Xterra 4.0, the customer concern or complaint is that there is no communication and the five volt reference is only given like two point or so volts. So this is the note that he sent me. Uh, the VIN number of the card is there, but it's not really much problem. I covered his phone number, so it's not a problem. And this is for you, Chris. Um, he contacted me through Facebook Messenger, and I have his computer already out of the box in here. This is the main case for the computer, 2008 Xera, and the uh, main board is here. I have that connected through this uh, breakout box, which is very, very good. I like it because it has a connector for the scanner, which I have already connected the VCM for my um, Outtel Elite and I can do communication. Well, not the way it is because right now it's dead, but I already know what the problem is and I wanna share this with you guys and also for his records because he does uh, repairs and diagnosis for, you know, as a, I think it's a mobile diagnostic service and he did the right call. The computer is the problem and I wanna show him uh, that yes, it can be repaired and I wanna share with you how I do the process of connecting to my breakout box. And in this case, I'm using the simulator just to supply power, but if I need, by using the same power in here, the simulator can provide me a five volt reference, 12 volts or 24 volts, all the sensors I need. So that's what I usually connect it through there. Like that, if I need a cam sensor or a crank sensor signal or O2s or injectors, or et cetera, I can provide those signals. For his complaint, it's not really necessary. Sorry. All right, so I got now, uh, well, I went over to Identifix and that's what the main connector for the computer, that's what we're looking at, that should be or will be exactly the same pinouts of this computer right here in the front. And I went ahead and um, found more information. Let me show you that. So I have um, the wire diagrams I went over into Identifix color wire diagrams are just, I actually, I just have this one just to make sure which one was kind of uh, kind of high, kind of low. Uh, let me close all this. Uh, but in the same um, Identifix, I look for the ECM pinouts, which is really, really convenient. That's where you have the connector terminal layout. And in this case, it starts like one, two, three, four, five, and then it's kind of like all over the place, six, seven, through like 24 and you can see the numbers hopefully i'm going to leave it in here but as you can see it goes kind of like a small numbers in here and then the 90s in here and then some 90s and the 100s in here and then some of the 100s in here but yeah i came down to here which is really really convenient and it tells me pin one is ground so i went all the way down to every single of all the lines that i needed and i wrote it down into a piece of paper that i can use for my testing. In this case, since there is no communication and no fiber reference, I, my, my main concern is to supply the powers to the computer, make sure that I got, you know, I checked the fiber reference are actually all share, and so is the sensor grounds, but either way, I got all the numbers in here and also all the sensor grounds, and I got the communication lines, kind of high, kind of low, and then the DLC7, which is the K line for the data, you know, for the diagnostics. Um, the keep alive memory, these are my powers, this is my grounds, and just a field point relate that actually I'm not using, but I, I wanted to have it just in case. All right, so right now the computer is, is on, as we can see here. I don't know what happened, they're kind of like a weird uh, thing on the video, hopefully it doesn't uh, show that bad. Um, so I got my simulator on, and that's in, the main power on this simulator is a red button, then the ignition, or the battery and then ignition switches the switch you i can turn in there and that is supplying and power in here we can see that i'm supplying almost uh, 13 volts which i can adjust to but you know 12.9 is perfect and i have rigged out on my meter the fiber reference in the sensor ground and we can see that i'm only getting 2.6 volts um, as we can see here I did have communication before. You see the that's the VIN number of the vehicle and everything is happy. If I get now out of here, the way this computer is, and I try to do a communication, I'm gonna try to do an auto detect so you guys can see that too. Some glare, but it's just the way it is with this reflective tools. But I think the video is going to be very good.
it's going to take a little a little while because it's actually no communication i know that when a computer is giving you you know 2.6 on the firewall reference that's bad news so he's also telling me that the fans are running constantly as soon as he switched the ignition on and there is no communication with the pc i just want to show you that that is exactly what we still have here and then I will take you over to the board and give you a little bit of the, the brief description on how this computer works. Yes, I know it's not going to be such a long video, so I think it's good to keep it everything as a one, uh, and then we can keep going to the next uh, test that I did to actually pinpoint a problem that might help some people around the world. I'm now having subscribers from. Uh, all Latin America, uh, all uh, South America, as you can see, well, right now, no communication. So I'm just going to leave that there. So what I'm going to show you now, uh, when you see these kind of situations in here, so I got powers and grounds in here and some grounds on the other side. This pin one is in here and pin one 19 and 20, which shares powers are and grounds are on this side, 115, 116. When you see something like this, this is the main power regulator. That coil in there is an inductor. There's, yes, uh, it, it, his main function in here is to provide a clean and a steady 5 volts. Not just only for the sensors, but also for the microprocessor, which is right here. The microprocessor needs to have a steady 5 volts. It doesn't matter if the battery goes down to 8 volts. As long as the, the microprocessor can get a steady 5 volts and the 3.3, a 2.1, and another ball rails that are internally necessary for the microprocessor, the data will not get corrupted. And that's the reason why they have that inductor and those uh, uh, caps, capacitors, to keep when you turn the uh, power off and then shut it down normally so the information can close correctly. That is like a computer on your house, the same, same thing. All right, so just, just a brief explanation. So this is my voltage regulator right here. So I'm looking for, you know, shorts. Uh, this is the main diode right here. So this is this left side is power. The right side is ground. Uh, when you're having, you know, hydrolytic uh, capacitors like this one, the black uh, line that you have in here is showing you the ground and the other side is power. I'm going to put your prison on the tripod so I can do the test and show you how I can bring this computer back to life and do communication. But I want to give you a little bit of a description so you understand. So the way this uh, voltage regulator works, and it's, you know, powers and grounds and activation from the microprocessor as soon as it's turned on, uh, this uh, voltage regulator will supply all the power rails, the 2.3, the 5.0, uh, the 5 and etc. So I find out that some of the pins in here, especially on this inductor, well, was that was my main uh, first check. It was only on two point something, as we can see here. It went out for timing in here. So we got only 2.6, and uh, yeah, that's not, the sensors need five volts. So I know that that is almost the same voltage. I'm like, oh, hmm. So something is not right, which is definitely our voltage regulator. But let's see if it's something else is shorted. So I look around, capacitors are fine. Uh, all these uh, kind of like uh, ceramic ones are also capacitors. We got also a MOSFET or, or so in here, which is going to be a part of the voltage regulation uh, for this computer. Uh, but then everything checked out good. I'm like, well, let me, let me do so another test. So I'm going to inject five balls through my simulator, which I have the capac uh, capability to do that, and to see if the computer talks, and it works. So that's a quick and easy way to see if, because you know this voltage regulator has all the grounds and has all the power, if I provide that fiber reference through the side of the uh, inductor, that it will send it out this way, is going to be the same as this voltage regulator should have been doing, now that just a 2.6. So Either something short out internally and now it's not producing the fiber reference. It's hard to say, you know, those are, um, um, it's, it's impossible to actually test this uh, uh, IC, so voltage regulators, this is, you know, good or no good, right? All right, so let me put you on the tripod and we keep going with the testing. Okay, you guys are, I think, in a good position. All right, so what I'm going to do, again, is this is just a fiber reference coming from my simulator. 
and I'm going to put it on the same um, inductor that I just referred to you and I'm going to try to do the communication back on so let me uh, get on the microscope is because you don't want to touch anything else except what you really want to do because the ground is very close to that so uh, one thing I can tell you is I already have a, on a steady um, amperage row you know when the computer is not communicating it's like a you know 0.15 of amps like you know 150 milliamps right now I got 430 that tells me that it wake up so now we're going to do it and not a detect we can see the fiber reference on the multimeter. It detected Nissan immediately. That's a good, a good thing. I'm going to run now. You know, like you are connected to a car. And that is the correct beam number of the car, which I have right here on a piece of paper. So the last digits will be five three six zero one eight, and that's exactly what we got there. Click OK, and it's telling me that it's an Xterra uh, N50 2008 North America. And then I can do diagnosis. Don't do auto scan because I will try to look for other modules. We only have the ECM, obviously. Engine computer. And again, this is going to take a little time to communicate. It's a 2008 computer. Not that it's that old, but it does uh, takes a lot of time. So we can do engine. ECO uh, information that's the part number for the computer which is correct we can read codes and obviously nothing is connected so it's going to throw a whole bunch of codes which is also good because we want to make sure that the logic of the computer is intact and is reading and is throwing code that should be there you have nothing connected and there is no codes I'm sorry but it's corrupted information so again, I'm just going to let this go a little bit so you guys can see this, but that's it. I mean, I know now for a fact that the problem is in the voltage regulator. So yeah, we have now communication. I can go out of here, which is exactly what I'm going to do now. Just, just stop the communication. If I let this go, we can see right here on the multimeter, it went down to 2.6 volts again. And what I was trying to tell you before, is now without a fiber reference through the regulator or through the inductor our um, amperage row from the computer is only two point uh, sorry 260 milliamps that's not enough you need at least with nothing connected the way this computer is you need at least almost half an amp otherwise you have something not working and even some of that is actually from the bci on my scanner if i disconnect this right now from here it will even go lower than that. Uh, I cannot. So just believe me, that draws something like probably like 100 and 100 milliamps. That's what that needs to start up the BCI for the scanner. All right, guys, that's just a short video of how I do tests. Some people is like, hey, dude, how you do it? Is uh, can you send me diagrams? I don't. I'm sorry. Uh, do your homework. You want to try to do this the best way. Don't ask for people to give you everything ready. That's very easy, very simple, but then you don't learn anything. I'm trying to help people, yes. Sharing the knowledge, yes, but do your homework. When you do your homework, you learn more. Nothing that I have here, I don't ask for any help on nobody. I dig myself the information online. I cannot say, you know, nobody because, yeah, obviously people share information in Google and everything, and that's very helpful. But I did my, my, you know, my homework, find the tools that I need, connect it together and make it work. That's, you know, that's how you need to do it. All right, guys, I will see you next time. Not to make the video too long with just uh, a little bit of a talking and not giving you information, but I will see you next time. Hopefully you like the video and thanks a lot. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye-bye.